Kiwanis is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world one child and one community at a time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clay, do you have a song for us today? I know you do, because you told me. It, uh, it'll, you'll notice there are no books out. I figured everybody knows this one. It starts with my country. My country, tis of the sweet land of liberty, of the ice, and where my father's heart and love of hills are of every mountain side, every country. Thank you so much, Clay. Uh, Chip has our prayer today. Let us bow our heads. Dear God, bless those among us who are suffering and mourning the loss of loved ones. In this year of challenges, give us as Kiwanis members the dedication and empathy to make a difference. Lord, please bring us together to act as servants of your word and keep us directed toward our goal of making the world a better place, one child and one community at a time. Bless this food to our use and us to your service. Amen. Thank you, Chip. Do we have guests today? I know we have some guests today because I've already talked to some of them. Gary, um, can, Clay, can you? It's my pleasure to have a guy who's become a friend of mine. He's also my chiropractor. This is Dr. Jeff Gerties, and his practice is right down the street, about a quarter of a mile from here. And uh, I'm glad to have him as my guest and hope he, and he's considering joining. So anyway, let's welcome him. Do we have any other guests today? Stuart. Uh, I saw my guest today, Lee Smither. Stand up, Lee. Lee was my partner at FMI for 35 years uh, and just retired a week and a half ago and is trying to figure that out. Um, he's a member of this church and he plays in the church band, right? And uh, so he lives right down the street, so I think he's a prospective member. I hope so, anyway. Any other guests? So since Hunter's standing up here with me, I'll just say thank you to Hunter today for subbing in um, to run our tech. So you guys be kind because, you know, at, or if anybody else wants to jump in, please. <laughs> Apparently, Hugh is in St. Martin or something. I don't know. Um, do we have any membership welfare items today? Uh, Gary? Well, some of you know this, but one of our former presidents, Mike Dodd, died. That's like three, three in a month. And uh, it was really uh, a total, uh, blew everybody's mind. He had his um, prostate removed um, robotically. And he got to feeling bad. He went back to the doctor, and they, and they said, it's all over your body. You've got about two days to live, and he lived about two hours. So keep your family in your prayers, please. And by the way, does anybody know when the funeral is? Yeah, yeah you, I've, you got, I've got the details, Gary. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, the, there's a memorial service uh, Tuesday, the 21st, at 3 o'clock at First Baptist Church on North Salisbury Street. They'll receive friends immediately following the service. Um, so please keep his wife, Mary Lou, and their family in, in your prayers. Nick. So uh, Cynthia Ball is having surgery today on her shoulder. And I'll back up a couple steps. She had a hip replacement in the summer. And then about uh, a month or six weeks ago, the hip that was replaced dislocated. 
and then and then somewhere along the way she fell and tried to catch herself and that screwed up her shoulder so she's really had uh, a lot more uh, time uh, around health care folks than she would have ever wanted this year so think about her thank you Nick anybody else uh, Don Suki who usually sits to my left is uh, in Hillcrest uh, recovering from pneumonia Any others? All right. Just a couple more announcements. Um, we typically serve at the Salvation Army the last Friday of the month, and we don't have any volunteers this month. It is a holiday weekend, but that makes it even more important to be there to serve these folks. So we need two volunteers on Friday the 24th from 4.30 to 6.30. If anyone volunteers like for the to volunteer, Army. please, you can see me or call Buck or Cricket uh, Harold, who it's for the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, makes those arrangements. We also are doing say. our Boys and Girls Club Christmas party on the 14th. So if you would like to volunteer, it is so much fun, uh, please. There's a sign up sheet right at the entrance. So if you'd like to volunteer, we'd love to have you there as well. Uh, we filled all of our slots for bell ringers. Um, so we don't need any more of those. Um, any other announcements day after Thanksgiving, before I turn things over for our speaker? Um, just one other thing, um, we, we have a memorial resolution for Hal Miller today. So after our speaker's finished, we'll close the meeting out with that memorial resolution. Yes, Robert. We're uh, a little over a month away from the end of our membership drive. And uh, so far I've got one member. Um, Sanford's got two, I think. And. Uh, Anyway, um, I've got a $250 gift certificate for the person that brings in the most new members until the end of the year. Great. Thanks, Robert. Angus Barn. All right. With that, I'm going to turn it over to June to introduce our speaker. I don't know how many of you had a chance to read uh, the bio of our speaker but I'm going to bring up a few items that were on the list. Uh, Dawn Downing is with us today. She's recently been recruited as Director of Development for the Community Music School. Uh, she's a nonprofit professional with over 20 years of experience in development and fundraising. She holds an MBA in Finance and a BS in Business Administration and Marketing from Thomas Jefferson University. She began a professional career at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business, where she helped to raise $345 million for the business school's campaign for excellence. She's the former assistant director of alumni relations for Duke University School of Law, where she worked to build and reactivate Duke Law Clubs across the country. She's also served excuse me, in um, 2017, she served as a senior development officer at North Carolina Theater, helping to raise over $1 million annually. And one of the highlights of her tenure at North Carolina Theater was the development and implementation of inclusion, diversity, and equity for employees in the arts committee. Finally, what was most significant to me, I think, was uh, a wonderful note of what she brings to the community music school, and that's uh, the following. Having been exposed to music at an early age, and with a mother who was a member of two opera companies in Philadelphia, where Dawn grew up, she knows firsthand the impact of music instruction in building brighter futures for children through music. And I think that just speaks volume. Dawn, we're just thrilled to have you. Welcome. Let me
me first say that it is such a pleasure and, and an honor to be here today. Um, your organization, having started here in 1920, has done some awesome work in the community. I was at a previous Kiwanis breakfast when I was representing North Carolina Theater in our conservatory that we had there. They are still, still near and dear to my heart. And my current executive director at Community Music School both of us were principal fundraisers at the theater, and now um, she has put the team back together again, as she says. So at Community Music School, we've been around since 1994. In February of next year, we'll be celebrating our 30th anniversary. And how we were founded, we were founded by former Raleigh Councilwoman Mary Cates. And she was inspired um, upon going to Nashville, Tennessee, and seeing a similar organization, she wanted to create a nonprofit here in the city that would provide access to high quality music instruction for children whose otherwise it would be a financial um, challenge for them to have one on one instruction. We provide, unlike some of the other organizations here that also do good work. They do group instruction, and we're the only nonprofit that provides one-on-one -on -one personalized instruction to children uh, utilizing all types of instruments and all types of genre, whatever the child may be interested in. And we also provide the instrument for them to take home if they're not able to have an instrument at home. Um, even when it comes to our students, who are practicing piano. We order keyboards from Amazon, thank God for Amazon, so the parents can take them home, the child can practice while they're home. Our program starts with an Explorers program, Explorers one and two, and those are for the little kids. And we typically, um, we do that during the summer, during our summer camp, and we also do that during the academic school year, our calendar follows the Wake County public school system academic year. And so we offer instruction to these children at the cost of $1 a lesson. And we've always been $1 a lesson. So for 32 weeks, the only thing a parent has to pay is $32. We are also the only music instruction uh, program of its kind in Raleigh that is a partner with the Berkeley School of Music in Boston. So some of our kids who are really gifted and excel, we help them apply to the Berkeley Summer Music Intensive Program. We also help those that are ready to graduate and if they have an interest in pursuing music as a professional or career, we help them through the application process to apply to Berkeley. And we even had one student that went to Bevere College of Music in the state of Washington. So it's just been a joy to see these children come through our doors, the Explorers program. We'll introduce them to playing a mandolin, to actually putting together their own kalimba and learning how to play the kalimba. We now have choral instruction as well. Uh, one of the individuals, we have two teachers that currently teach, one teaches strings and the other one piano, who were students of ours. And our strings instructor, Mariah Luke, is actually the conductor of the strings orchestra for Wake County Public School System, and she also sits on our board. So we have alums that have been through the program that are, content that are now giving back to other students. This year, we have enrolled 256 students, and we have 21 on the waiting list. We are located at 322 Chappanook Road, just south of downtown, south of Saunders. And we have a partnership with the Long Leaf School for the Arts. So they use the, the rooms during the day, and they, are, they have a band room, percussion room, so it fits perfect with what we do. And we utilize the facility from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at night, Monday through Friday. And we even have a pop band. So those are some of our more you know, students that have gained some expertise where they now perform throughout the city. So they recently performed at the city of Raleigh's uh, African American celebration, and we received a special invitation for them to perform at the 50th anniversary of hip hop celebration. But they do private parties, 
They play for um, other nonprofits. So uh, that we have a band of six members. We have two people playing the drums. We have piano, we have guitar. Um, so it's very exciting to see the students get out in the community and get comfortable with performing. Now, we all know we've heard studies about, well, music instruction, how does that benefit the child? Number one, with school systems um, dwindling the, the, their offerings of having music instruction, when I was in school, I actually had two friends that, well, they're actually four, there's a trio and a woman that plays jazz. They learned those instruments in middle school. We had a middle school teacher who was a jazz uh, professional, had his own band, and he saw their talent. As part of our instruction, all of us had to take the music class and we had to select an instrument. And again, like community music school, when you have an adult that sees that a child is talented, they will hone those skills for them. So I'm proud to say I do have friends that are Grammy Award winning jazz artists, and it was only because the music program was offered in school. And now with so many challenges that our public school system face, our students nowadays, our young people may not have that opportunity and especially trying to do it on your own when parents have other financial challenges is a struggle. We have some parents that have multiple children who are enrolled in community music school at this moment. We have one uh, parent, Mrs. Marlboro. She, because we're celebrating our 30th anniversary, we've been around long enough that she's waiting for her granddaughter to be old enough to participate in our program. And the benefits of music instruction to children, well, of course, I'm sure you all know that it increases the child's social emotional learning skills. It increases their cognitive skills. UCLA did a study, a 10 year study where they followed 25,000 students and they, they actually saw that there was a difference in the students that took music instruction and those that did not in terms of their SAT scores, in terms of their high performances in mathematics, in terms of them just being able to communicate um, and, their so, and their social skills are, children music instruction has been proven to been proven to show that children learn how to cooperate they learn decision making um, there are so many benefits to music instruction and so that's just that's the icing on the cake with the children that are participating in our program um, so i hope you this this December 10th, we have our holiday concert, which will be at the North Carolina Museum of Art starting at 2 p.m. It's free, so I invite all of you to come out and see the great works that we do in this community. And now I wanna share with you, I had two videos to select, and one was of our alum, Mariah Luke, and she's talking about her experience um, having a neighbor that could afford music lessons and learned how to play the cello and Mariah decided that she would like to do so as well and she her mother discovered community music school and now she's grown she's in her late 20s um, and she's the one that's the orchestral leader. But it's kind of comes off as a little promotional piece it's on YouTube you can look it up community music school and Mariah Luke and you can see it. But I put together a video for you today because I want you to see our mission in action. I want you to, the first video will be of the Explorers class. So you'll see the children playing the mandolin and then it will end with two musical performances which were held at the North Carolina Museum of Art last year with two of our students. So I hope you will enjoy and then I'll welcome any questions that you may have. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Do you have questions? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, if so, I know I think you said this, and I just didn't process it. So, if you're at a different school and you want the music lessons, mm -hmm. can you be involved? And how do they get transportation? Is where I'm we're going open about. to every child that is in Wake County, and those that want to come further, we're we're open to that. It doesn't we're we are housed at the Longfellow School for the Arts, but our kids come from all over. Majority of the children are in Garner, Nightdale, um, Raleigh area, and our instructors are just to answer this question because it may come up. Our instructors are professional musicians and academics that teach at college level, high school, and middle school. And we even have one uh, woman who was the harpist for the Umstead. She comes all the way from uh, Winston-Salem every Friday to teach, and she's, don't, she's loaned us a lot of her harps for our students to play. And how do the but children, children get enroll there? by going to our website? We have an enrollment section, so they can go. To, the parent can go to the website and complete the enrollment section. Our child, the children that qualify for our program at the present time, we're looking to change this in our five-year strategic plan that we just completed. Um, but they have to qualify for free lunch, so that's where that financial challenge comes in. But we do want to be able, as we continue to grow and we're able to support more children, to be able to perhaps, we're looking at a sliding scale because just because your financial situation on paper may not say there's a need. We all know there's a lot of us that are living paycheck to paycheck where we still have a financial need if we wanted our child enrolled in a program like this. And their parents bring them to the school? Yes, their parents bring them to the school, aunties, uncles, grandmas, and we also work with um, the Health and Human Services Division because we do have some children that are foster children and they provide transportation for them, so we work with them in that way. So I noticed, I, I thought about myself and that uh, thing with the mandolins because the kid in the foreground he was one half beat behind the entire piece. Yes, <laughs> that's our Explorers program, so they're still learning. <laughs> so you said you got 20 some on the waiting list. Yes, 21. And my question then is, what's, what's holding you back from taking them on? We need our own building. And we need funds so we can hire more teachers. Right now at Longfellow, we actually have a piano on the second floor that's in the hallway. Um, there's challenge on certain nights at Long, Long, Longleaf where they have a theater program. So if the, they take precedence over the space because that is their school. So we have to find little spaces where we can teach when that happens and we can't because we have a piano teacher that is using the cafeteria. And that's where their theater program will often rehearse in the cafeteria. Sometimes they're doing their own thing in their corner in the same space, and then our teacher is trying to instruct in the corner in the same cafeteria. Um, hopefully, as we continue to build our coffers, we can start looking at our own building. We do, we have challenged our board though with putting together an emergency plan in place just in case someone at Longleaf School for the Arts decides that they don't want to renew our partnership. And then we have to scramble and find someplace else. So we want to have that plan in place so we know where we're going. Yes. Where do you get your instruments? We have, well, we um, have a, a solid long-term relationship and we love them with Ruggiero pianos. So they always provide instruments for us. And if we, we have an old piano right now, which, you know, we feel is okay, but they're like, oh no, that's old. We're not gonna keep tuning that one. But we have one that was recently donated to Ruggiero. And so they're gonna switch it out. Uh, we also order our own keyboards and clarinets and a lot of our instruments we'll order on Amazon or we also, I write grants for the organization. So there are certain grant programs that provide in, monies for instruments. So we utilize that as well. We accept donations, but when the instruments, when they're donated, they have to be in good shape. And if it's something that needs to be tuned, it needs to be tuned before it is donated to us because we don't have the monies to tune instruments. Okay, 
what is your musical history is the question. <laughs> what instrument do I play? So a lot of adults have that story of learning to play an instrument and then something happens and we no longer take lessons. So my story is as a mother who is tr a trained opera singer who started in her 30s, she wanted my sister and I to have piano lessons. My mother and all seven of her other siblings all took piano. My grandmother learned piano. So that was something that she wanted my sister, a skill set she wanted us to have. But um, I took it in the summertime and my instructor started off pretty cool. But then I hit the wrong note. He banged this finger on the keys and I said, I'm done. He said, oh, no, we still have like 15 minutes left. I said, no, sir, I don't think you understand. I am done. Like, this is our last lesson, mom. So that, but I'm the singer in the family. Like now my mother as a trained opera singer would poo poo that and say, mm, she's okay. But I've sung in church. I was president of my choir for four years. So I thought I was pretty good because anytime pastor got up to speak or he toured the city of Philly and being an invited guest, he always wanted me to sing Whitney Houston's I Love the Lord before he preached. So I figure I was pretty good if that was the request before the pastor got up to speak. And I call myself a karaoke queen. So if you're ever in the, I live in Wake Forest. So if you're ever in Wake Forest at Pickled Onion Friday or Saturday night, I'm belting out Tina Turner River Deep Mountain High. So, <laughs> and I can hold a note very long. So my brother was the bassist in the family. So he had a jazz fusion band. So again, more music. I have time to sing. <laughs> I'll just give you one little, one little snippet only, but only because I'm a ham. I love the, the Lord, he heard my cry and pitied every groan, long as I, I live. Fundraising, 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 and also the partnerships that we have within the city. Um, hopefully, somebody I know may be, well, he, he's definitely running for mayor next year. And I ride around, I see all these abandoned buildings. And I had an opportunity um, to attend the Hope Brothers Foundation event last week. And I sort of put a bug in his ear like, we need one of those empty buildings. So we're working on it now and not at the last minute. Any other questions? Yes. Um, in your role as the chief development person for your organization. So mm -hmm. as far as your funding sources, I know you have lots of in kind, mm -hmm. but as far as your operating and your funding sources, kind of what are the main ones? And then I heard you mention that y'all have a new strategic plan. I assume the yes. building's part of it and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what are the major goals of your new five-year plan? Thank you. The major goal of the five-year plan are we're trying to hit 300 students. Um, we also want to continue to hire qualified music instructors. And our instructors are getting paid. We're trying to move up to the point where we can pay them what the average salary would be worth for music for music instruction. It goes between $55 to $100 an hour. We pay $45, so we're trying to get to $55. So that's one of the goals for our strategic plan. Um, we also want to be able to 
we currently have a satellite office at Southeast Wiley Promise, but we're getting out in the community so we can build, continue to build our partnerships. So as I mentioned before, we work with Health and Human Services. Um, I have a I have conversations currently. I'm in Leadership Raleigh, by the way. So I have made a lot of friends. Hello. And Leadership Raleigh. So I'm trying to get out there in the community to, so those that support families who would qualify that they know about our program and that's one another thing that we're focusing on um, is branding and just creating awareness we have a um, in the works we're getting a new website so all of us are giving our input for the website to make it easier for families to apply we also don't want to um I, we don't really tout the fact that the families qualify for free lunch because we don't want anybody feeling a certain kind of way about their situation. There's a need. We know there's a need. We know that music lessons, one on one instruction is not affordable. So we want to make it as easy in a, in a dignified kind of way um, for families to be able to go through the process. And we recognize that, you know, you don't have to show us your tax statements and W2, you don't have to do all that. Um, but we know that there is a need um, for what we do. Anything else? Any other questions? Well, I just wanna thank all of you um, for the invitation that you've given me. And I know uh, June was talking about the most important thing and talked about my mother, but I am a child that was raised every summer down in North Carolina, North Carolina and Warren County. So I just want you to know that this is my community as well. My cousin's husband just retired as sheriff from up there after 28 years, Sheriff Johnny Williams. So just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for a wonderful presentation and for your singing. Oh, thank you. Um, we, we donate a book uh, every week that is dedicated to our speakers. So we'd love for you to sign this oh, for today. You. And that will go to Wake County Schools. Thank you so much one more time. Um, we're going to adjourn today after the memorial resolution. So let me just um, thank our guests for coming. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. Lee, we'd love to have you back anytime. Next week, don't come here for lunch because it's Thanksgiving weekend. So we're not meeting on the 24th. On December 1st, we'll have Rabbi Eric Solomon giving us a Hanukkah message. And December 8th, uh, Patrice Ressler from the Center for Public Leadership and Governance will speak. Um, I'll now turn it over to Phil Kirk to read Hal Miller's memorial resolution. Um, we'll be ending with a moment of silence, um, and I'd like to uh, include Mike Dodd and his family in that moment of silence. Memorial resolution in honor and recognition of Hal Macon Miller. Whereas Hal Macon Miller, son of Merrill Cushing Miller Sr. and Hallie Winston Miller was born on January 25, 1937 in Raleigh, North Carolina and died on May 22, 2022 at age 85 in Raleigh. Whereas Hal Macon Miller was a 1955 graduate of Needham Broughton High School and a 1959 graduate of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. He attended the Aviation Candidate Program in Pensacola, Florida, and was commissioned in the United States Navy in 1960. He served at the uh, Cuba, Cuba, Cuba Point Naval Air Force Station in the Philippines and at the Naval Air Station Chase Field in Jet Training Command in Beeville, Texas. While serving at Chase Field, he married Wilma Scheffler, and they had 58 wonderful years together. Whereas Hal Macon Miller left the Navy after seven and a half years and returned to Raleigh to enter the family business with his father. In 1972, he joined the administrative staff of the North Carolina Community College System, and that's where I learned to know him and worked with him. Uh, at the time of his retirement in 1996, 
He was working in legislative affairs at the community college system. He then served a year as associate executive director of the North Carolina Association of Community College Trustees. Whereas Hal Macon Miller was a man of strong faith and a very active member of the Church of the Good Shepherd, where he served twice on the vestry and in other church volunteer positions. Hal and Wilma both served on the Episcopal Camp and Conference Center Board of Visitors for 24 years. He also volunteered with Special Olympics, served as president of the Raleigh Executives Club from 2008 to 2012, and was a member of the Research Triangle Amputee Support Group and the North Carolina Auditory Learning Council. Whereas Hal Macon Miller was a loving stepfather to their three children, Mark, Jill, and Sherry, he was a friend to all, a giving and charitable neighbor and humanitarian. He was a lo lover of animals, especially cats and dogs. He was a faithful UNC supporter and had football season tickets for many years. He enjoyed surf fishing and walking on the beach. Whereas Hal Macon Miller was predeceased uh, by his uh, wife Wilma in 2021, two children, Mark and Jill, his brother, Merrill Miller Jr., his grandson, Brian Griffin, and his niece, Katie, Kate, Katie Miller. He was survived by his daughter, Sherry Mariano Coward, and her husband, John, two grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. Whereas Hal Macon Miller joined the Kiwanis Club of Raleigh in 1972 and was an active, dependable, and valued member for many years. He served as president of the foundation in 1976 and was a C.A. Dillon Jr. Fellowship Award recipient. Whereas Hal Macon Miller was a loving family man who opened his heart and offered sound advice and counsel to his friends, to his family, and to the members of the Kiwanis Club of Raleigh, who recognized him as a suitable role model for any citizen who seeks to make a positive impression among his family, and to leave his community a better place than he found it. Whereas the Kiwanis Club of Raleigh desi desires to recognize, honor, and emulate the life of Hal Miller and the quality of relationships with he, which he built. Therefore, be it resolved that the Kiwanis Club of Raleigh, North Carolina, hereby memorializes the life of a loyal member, Hal Macon Miller, and celebrates his career and commends to all a life well lived and a demonstrated dedication to his family to his friends, to his church, and to his community. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution be spread upon the minutes of the Kiwanis Club of Raleigh, and be it finally resolved that a copy of the resolution be provided to the family as an expression of the affection and respect of the Kiwanis Club of Raleigh for its member, uh, Hal Macon Miller. Madam President, I move the uh, adoption of this resolution. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The resolution is adopted. Now we'll have a moment of silence for Hal Miller and Mike Dodd. My music career lasted one year. My mother, my mother made me take piano lessons and she made me quit. 